Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Viterbi Summer Institute closing ceremony. To begin our program, please welcome the director of the USC Viterbi Center for Engineering Diversity, Ms. Tracy Thomas Navarro. Hi everyone, <clears throat> and welcome to the live broadcast of the 2020 Viterbi Summer Institute closing celebration. Thank you for joining us. Though we're disappointed we couldn't enjoy this event with you in person, we're so happy to be here with you live in Zoom. And because we're using technology in this amazing way this year, we've hosted participants from coast to coast, Mexico, Japan, Brazil, Trinidad and Tobago, and Thailand, along with some of their family members who are joining us this evening. The Viterbi Summer Institute, or VSI, is a high achievement program designed to enhance the transition to USC for first year students from historically underrepresented backgrounds. Over the course of the four weeks, our VSI participants have worked hard to prepare for the complex coursework and academic rig rigor of the Turby engineering. We are grateful to our team of 35 student leaders, our PhD research mentors, our instructors, our eight Viterbi department chairs and our student affairs colleagues whose leadership and part partnership make this program possible. Today we are celebrating the hard work and achievements of our nearly 80 participants. During our time together, their days and evenings have been full. In addition to completing two sample classes of calculus and programming, they've met the chairs of each department including Dr. Ronnie, Chair of the Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering Department's Horse Cavalier. They've built relationships with one another from movie nights, escape rooms, self-care sessions with facials, and they've completed their research experience, which we will highlight later this evening. Each student has begun building their network of success at Viterbi. To get our celebration started, I would like to introduce Dean Giannis Yortsos. Since 2005, his leadership has earned the Viterbi School numerous distinctions. During his tenure, he has demonstrated an unwavering commitment to the student experience at Viterbi, and he's dedicated to supporting the holistic development of all of our students. We're grateful for his support and commitment to both the Viterbi Summer Institute, as well as all of the initiatives in the Center for Engineering Diversity. Please welcome Dean Yortsos. Well, thank you very much, Tracy, and a very warm welcome to all of you. It's a great pleasure for me to participate in the closing ceremony for this year's successful conclusion of the Viterbi Summer Institute. Uh, as you probably can see from my background, I am in my office. I can see out here to the uh, uh, Epstein Plaza. I am sort of almost hoping that I'll see your faces somewhere down there. Uh, I know that we live in a very different world than what we expected, but uh, we hope to return to this world soon. And we hope that uh, your career at USC, in, at USC Viterbi will be very eventful and it will be very satisfying and complete, uh, even though we have to start perhaps the, this uh, uh, part of your career at USC in a different way. But that will help us uh, conquer uh, uh, the obstacles that come along and we'll be able actually to uh, be able to provide a different experience, an experience that hopefully will be as satisfying as, as, as fulfill, fulfilling as uh, the one if you were here on campus. I say often that uh, even though we are uh, connected, we're sep uh, physically separated, we're actually more connected than ever before. And that was actually very true today. Uh, when I understand that the Viterbi Summer Institute uh, entertained or included students from some different parts of the world. That is really so amazing that we're able to do that. Um, I, I would like to welcome all our new students who participated in the Institute, and I would very much like to see you uh, and meet you in person uh, and not too long into the future. Uh, our donors and friends, uh, parents, and any anyone else who participates in the program today, as well as our CD students and staff. 
And also I'd like to welcome and thank all of our faculty and staff and our PhD students who contributed to the success of the Institute and the staff of the Center for Engineering and Diversity. Uh, above all, I'd like to thank and congratulate our Vice Dean for Diversity and Strategic Initiatives, Dr. Brandy Jones, who supervised the Institute and was fundamental and instrumental in getting this going. As Tracy mentioned, the Viterbi Summer Institute is designed to enhance the transition to UAC for engineering students from underrepresented backgrounds. Uh, for the participants to gain a, gain a competitive edge by engaging with faculty, staff, and students in a supportive community environment. It's very important for us to um, make sure that as you enter USC Viterbi, uh, you feel the support and the commitment that we have for your success. The four-week program that uh, uh, you experience is going to prepare students for complex coursework, as well as the academic rig rigor of the Viterbi School of Engineering. Uh, VSI is the kickoff to a four-year high school um, achievement uh, program under the leadership of Vice Dean for Diversity and Strategic Initiatives, and it provides academic support, professional development, and community building. Viterbi has a long history of supporting students from underrepresented backgrounds. The Center for Engineering Diversity, which is formerly known as the Minority Engineering Program, was established a long time ago, in 1975. It was the first private, we were the first private university in California to establish such an office, and we're very proud of that. This year's participants, almost 80 of them, consist of uh, represent representatives from many, many different uh, uh, backgrounds and ethnicities, as well as he has a very balanced gender demographic. Almost 50-50 of, uh, of the population is, is balanced. We are very proud of the fact that USC Viterbi School of Engineering has a gender balance in its entering class. It was last year and it will be this year as well. Uh, and we are very uh, committed to make sure that we provide the highest possible education to all our students and also to help everyone here succeed. As uh, Tracy mentioned, you have taken courses on calculus, programming, and computer systems, and I'd like to thank the faculty and the PhD students who supported this program and acted both as instructors as and mentors. Why do we have the Viterbi Summer Institute? because it fits within a broader school-wide effort to promote equity and inclusion. We're committed to the following priorities. Increase the pipeline and pathways to attract students, faculty, and staff from all backgrounds, including backgrounds that are represented in engineering. To promote an inclusive and equitable climate, to retain and support all members of our community and to dismantle systemic factors and structural racism issues that produce and maintain racial inequities. At USC, we have created for some time now a commitment to uh, what we call parity objective. It means that we will do everything possible to ensure your success as you go through your studies at Viterbi. Your success is our success. It means that you will be given equal opportunity to succeed as anyone else, and the school will be held itself accountable for your success as well. It's a fundamental of our commitment to equity and inclusion, and it is something that we believe in it. Um, we have um, articulated a lot of this in, in uh, uh, ways that have been uh, echoed and mimicked across the country. We started at USC an initiative back in 2016 that is now uh, um, uh, accepted and have become part of the commitment of more than 200 engineering schools across the country. We want you to be uh, given the opportunity to be as successful as possible. And as I mentioned, we will hold ourselves accountable and uh, for your success, and we'll be able, we will we'll try to be as supportive as possible, and uh, for you to feel that you are at home 
and you have all the resources that you need to be successful. So thank you again for being part of this uh, wonderful institute. Um, I am uh, very excited to uh, welcome all of you at USC, Viterbi. Um, our vision and our mission is to engineer a better world for all humanity, to help um, it usher in a, a, a way of thinking and a way of representing uh, that will help us create a different world, a world that, for which we will be proud, uh, all of us, and this will be a world that will be um, uh, a global world of, of success and, 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 and being able to uh, um, address all the various challenges that we're facing, as well as be able to conquer them. So thank you again. Um, I, as I said, I look forward to the opportunity to meet each one of you personally. And I look forward to that uh, uh, great time when we will be able to be together in person. Uh, I, uh, again, congratulations for successfully completing the Institute. And I look forward uh, to you joining the Viterbi family in, uh, um, as, uh, in a few weeks from now. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dean Yortis. At this time, we will now hear from some of our VSI participants. They've each prepared a short reflection about their experiences this, these four weeks. Please welcome Alejandra Felix, an incoming chemical engineering student from Huntington Park, and Benji Lacona, an incoming civil engineering student from Auburn, Georgia. We'll first hear from Alejandra. Hello everyone. As you know, my name is Alejandra Felix and I'm a freshman going into chemical engineering. As a participant in the Viterbi Summer Institute, I have found this experience very valuable and also memorable. Receiving the email joined VSI was a little scary to me because I didn't know how it was going to work out and I felt like I would feel behind or not make any friends. But signing up has been the best decision I've made before I even started my journey at USC. Being in an environment that is full of people who have the same passion as me for engineering is super amazing. Learning different things from others as well has been so great because I get to know people from the Turby before we actually start. I believe VSI has done a great job at exposing us to what the school year will look like in the fall. It was a huge support in the shift from high school to college, the preview before the actual deal. From receiving math and programming classes from professors at USC to workshops about useful information we might need for help, VSI has given me and many of us the opportunity to make connections before even school starts. We were given the opportunity to know what our semester can look like through the eyes of our student leaders, which by the way, have been super helpful. The programming class has been an amazing experience. Coming from someone who's never coded in their life, someone who didn't even know what Python or HTML was, it was honestly super amazing to learn how to code both professors were super helpful and it was an honor learning from them. They always stopped for questions and encouraged us to ask questions. The math class was also super helpful. The office hours that they provided were great and the TAs were super helpful as well. The introduction to research was also very great. I learned many things like enzyme kinetics, which was super great to learn and very interesting. Even though sometimes it was difficult, whenever I asked my, whenever I asked my PhD mentor for help, she was really quick to respond and help me out. Lastly, I want to thank VSI for giving me the opportunity to make connections and friends with other people. The resources that they have given, I will make sure to take advantage of and keep my friendships. I like the way we all had bonding activities at the end of the week or even with our roommates and small groups and getting to know our student leads has been super fun. One of my favorite moments was doing the scavenger hunt with Viterbi Academic Services. This activity was so fun and genuinely made being on a Zoom call more fun. Everyone was so supportive and helpful and I feel less nervous about my first semester and receiving advice and help from the student leads was super helpful. They were super friendly and I'm incredible, incredibly grateful to have met them. Because of ESI, I've learned to use Slack, an app USC uses, Piazza, a site where we can ask questions for help in our programming class. And I am constantly on top of my emails and responding to them quickly. I think VSI has helped me stay on track first with starting my week early in the morning and has made me make an agenda that plans out my week so that I don't miss anything, which is something I'm sure all of us are going to need this semester that the majority of the classes will be online. 
Even if BSI was on Zoom this year, it was still very enjoyable for me, and I'm sure it was for others too. So thank you, BSI. Thank you, Alejandra. Now let's hear from Benji. Sorry about that. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Benji and I'm a civil engineer major. As some of my classmates know, I graduated in May 2019 and took a gap year rather than going straight into college for various reasons. As one of, if not the oldest student in the program, I felt a responsibility to take this time to reflect and share some insight as to what I gained and learned from my experience here. I was this close to missing out on the program because I decided to sign up on the last day to register. You see, I've been working full-time in construction since graduation, and I honestly did not realize how much I would miss school until I was fully into the workforce. I was enjoying the money I was making, of course, and honestly, I thought about not going back to school, but I believe I would have skipped a big chapter of my life and not going to college. So after I applied and was accepted to USC, again, congratulations to everybody for being accepted. I was actually really pumped about it all. However, having been out of school for so long, I really have forgotten the majority of what I learned in high school. So this was a major factor in me taking part of VSI. Through the intro to calculus, computer programming, and our research groups, I feel as though VSI has really helped me get back into the right mindset for school and offered me a refresher, especially in calculus. I know that if I went straight into my first fall semester without VSI, that I would have done poorly, without a doubt. I am grateful and thankful for all that Dean Yortzos, Dean Jones, Ms. Christina, Ms. Tracy, the professors, the mentors, the TAs, and the leaders have done for us. I think some of my favorite experiences have been with my small group led by Nick and Tierra, where we played online bonding games and we mixed with another group and played an escape room game. Even though I'm horrible with computers, I've personally enjoyed the programming class because it's been something new but also challenging to me. Of course, I've also enjoyed meeting some great new people and getting to know them. As I look back on the past month, I think I made a great and honestly the right decision to participate in the Vertserbi Summer Institute. I do not know what the future holds, but I will say that I hope you enjoy and truly make the most out of these next couple years at USC, guys. I know we're all pretty disappointed about not being able to have a traditional freshman year, but you guys really have some bright futures ahead of you, and I know we're all gonna do great. So thank you for your time, everyone, stay safe and fight on. Thank you, Benji. Both of you, we are so happy that you made those last minute decisions to join VSI 2020. And I know everyone that had the opportunity to meet you, including your research mentors, professors, and your incoming class was happy that you made that decision. Thank you for sharing with us tonight. Now it's time to hear from more of our VSI participants. To lead us into our research presentations, I have the pleasure of introducing the Center for Engineering Diversity's Associate Director, my colleague and friend, Christina Morales-Martin. Thank you, Tracy. I'd like to take this opportunity to extend a warm welcome to all of you here tonight. A key component of the VSI program is providing our students the opportunity to explore university research. Under the leadership of Viterbi PhD student mentors, VSI participants worked in groups to learn about the process of engaging in original research, the work currently being done in Viterbi labs, and ways for undergraduates to become involved in research during their time at USC. We will now hear about the experiences of each of our research groups. Now I would like to invite group one to get us started. Hello, my name is Samuel Morlejo and I am an incoming computer science major representing the Industrial Systems Engineering Health Research Group led by our mentor Chow Chun Wu. The first research project we wanted to delve into was chronic kidney disease. Specifically, how can modern, modern health clinics slow down the progression rate and costs of chronic kidney disease? The importance of this research is due to the fact that chronic kidney disease can develop quickly 
and it can become a very costly and deadly disease, eventually leading into end-stage renal disease. In fact, a majority, almost 90%, go undiagnosed until it reaches a later stage in which the cost can range to just over $100,000 per year. This research is especially important for gentrified and marginalized communities, which research shows are three to four times more prone to contracting the disease. We can also see how the cost of a late stage treatment can quickly become unsustainable with $100,000 being much higher than the 63,000 median income for an American household. The second research project we wanted to explore was medical adherence and promoting treatment for adults with chronic diseases. Non-adherence is typically linked with a lack of information on procedures and medication regimen. This can quickly become an issue as 60% of American adults are affected by chronic conditions and adherence is a crucial component of chronic disease management. In fact, non-adherence costs the U.S. healthcare system anywhere from $100 to $300 billion annually. In order to promote adherence, we should increase transparency of side effects and effectiveness of medication and promote accessibility to medical resources. For future research, we can create a simulation study that monitors the health outcomes, for example, CKD progression, as well as the costs given different adherence levels. We can also test various combinations of risk factors and analyze their correlation with CKD progression rates. Thank you so much for your time. Great. Thank you, Sam. And now I'd like to invite research groups 2A and 2B. Hello, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to present our research to you all. I am Ethan Fulcher, and I will be representing Group 2A under research mentor Elizabeth, who specializes in AI tools. We started the program with thinking about problems in the world that we felt most annoyed with, without thinking about solutions. Eventually, our group concluded that the biggest social problem we saw with the world at the moment was the misinformation and overall lack of knowledge on social issues on a global scale. We then thought about how we could design a CS and eventually AI tool to help us solve this problem in an efficient way with limited resources. Our main goal was to provide a resource for readers to learn more about social issues in an easy to follow format while attempting to limit bias. Initially, we set about designing a web application that would aggregate headlines from 20 news sources with varying political biases. These biases were estimated using a website called allsize.com that would also attempt to gather first-hand accounts and videos from social media sites like Twitter and categorize them based on social issues. Quickly, we realized that our constraints would not allow for this. We, ha we only had, at the time, two weeks to have a working prototype and the most amount of experience that I had with programming was failing my intro to programming classes final freshman year. From this lofty goal, we cut down to only identifying headlines from four sources, ABC, BBC, NPR, and Fox, opting not to gather firsthand sources and deciding to limit our identifier to only identifying social issues and not attempting to categorize them. So the back end of the program is really split into two parts, the web identifier and the web scraper. The web scraper goes onto the news source, specifically the world news section of each source, and scrapes headlines off of the sources by looking at the HTML code composing each site and finding the headlines from within. From there, we are able to scrape the URL off the headline as well and create a timestamp of the scrape for further use. After all of this, the information gathered is then added to an independent text document and then an identifier program is run. The identifier takes the headlines from these documents and attempts to identify if each headline pertains to a social issue. The rationale we used for this identification was essentially a large bank of trigger words or words that we felt would be associated with social issues. The problem with this is that the definition of a social issue is relatively vague, essentially any problem that influences many citizens within a society. This vagueness does not help in the accuracy of the identifier. The identifier's word bank is broken down into categories that attempt to log these human issues. These categories are ethnicities with a population of over 5 million, simply because there would be so many ethnicities that an arbitrary limit had to be set so I wouldn't be typing all day. Words describing people, for example, boy, girl, woman, but specifically not man. Religions, social dissidence words like protests and boycotts, and religious places. As you can probably tell, this identifier is highly flawed. For starters, it doesn't recognize social issues for the smaller ethnicities, which are often most susceptible to these social problems. Words like man had to be removed because it appears so often in other words, and ethnicities like the Han Chinese will often be misidentified with foreign policy in China. All these errors add up to having a high false positive rate, as well as missing some important social issues. The identifier finally puts all the identified headlines in another text document, along with a timestamp and a link of the article for the front end to publish on a website for users to read. A sample of this can be seen on the slide. As you can tell, the current V1 of the social issue website has a lot of issues that are planned on continuing to solve past VSI. 
We want to improve the source range to give our readers more sources to learn from, improve the identifier to reduce false positive rates, as well as look out for smaller social issues that are still affected by people worldwide, improve the efficiency of the program. Because this was our first time coding, we had a lot of clunky solutions to simple problems. Gather data from places like Twitter for first person sources, and finally do data analysis on the headlines that we gather. We've already been able to find the frequency of words used in the headlines of each source and will attempt to further understand the data to see if any connections can be made between specific sources and the use of specific words over others that may lead to them having a bias even in their headlines about these issues. Finally, Group 2A wants to thank VSI for giving us this amazing opportunity to work on this awesome research and for giving us an awesome research, research mentor that taught us so much in such a short period of time. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Lucinda Quintal. I'm an up, I'm, hi, um, I'm Lucinda Quintal. I'm an incoming computer science major and I'll be representing research group 2B, also mentored by Elizabeth Andula. Our research process began by brainstorming things in the world that we're frustrated, um, that we were frustrated with. Um, and each of, us, each of us came up with a slightly different problem, but we realized that all of them boiled down to the lack of interaction between people of different backgrounds causing divisiveness in our society. When brainstorming a solution to this issue, we agreed that education starting from primary years would be the most effective solution. However, it's not realistically implementable by us at the moment. We also didn't want to make something that's boring to use because that has limited impact. To arrive to a solution that was both re realistically implementable and engaging for users, we embarked on several methods of data collection. We distributed Google Form surveys, conducted direct interviews through Zoom, and asked open-ended questions on Reddit and Quora. Our survey of 29 people reported that when asked to recall a time they made an assumption about someone of a different background, 72% responded that their assumption was negative, which is the problem that we're working to solve. The result of our brainstorming and data collection is a web application that facilitates impassioned discussions between users of different backgrounds. In the user interface, our program features a profile page where the user inputs as much information about themselves as they're comfortable with, including age, gender, religious affiliation, etc. This data is saved by our server onto a JSON file of users. When the user enters the chat page, they're automatically assigned a unique ID and a chat buddy based on the information they inputted on the profile page. Our matching algorithm reads the JSON file of users and assigns the user a chat buddy that has up to three out of nine things in common, but no more because we want because our goal is to ignite conversation between users of different backgrounds. We utilize the JavaScript library socket.io to power the chat feature. This allows users to send real-time chats directly to their chat buddy. To test our application, we simulated different users from different browser tabs. The fourth and final page shows metadata about the statistics of the users of the site. It gives insight into what the mean age of the users is, users are, and what backgrounds they are from. Um, and this is based on the JSON file inputted through the data inputted through the profile page. This helps us further understand our user base and adjust features accordingly. Our application is nearly functional, and as a group, we've decided to continue meeting after VSI to continue to work on it. We've purchased the domain zoomgoom.org to make our application live in the next few weeks. The name zoomgoom or originates from the Swahili word zoomgoomza, which means to chat or to speak, since Swahili is the native tongue of our mentor. Throughout this process, our team learned to collaborate using Git, an important skill for computer science majors like ourselves. We also gained a lot of practical skills in the research and design process, as well as technical skills in JavaScript and Node.js, and, and, <coughs> and we want to thank BSI for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Ethan and Lucinda. We will now hear from group three. Hello, my name is Imani Masembi. I'm an incoming biomedical engineering major and I will be presenting for group three under mentor Zumra Seidel. So our project focused on enzymes and enzyme kinetics. In order to understand what we learned, we need to know what enzymes are. Enzymes are biological catalysts. To be more specific, they're substances, proteins, and in some cases, RNA, that speed up a biochemical reaction by modifying specific substances called substrates. Enzymes bind to their substrates, holding them in a way that the chemical bond breaking and forming can take place more easily. They have an active site where the substrate binds and real-time action takes place. 
the reaction then produces a product. For example, when lactase acts on lactose, it produces glucose and galactose. There's a specific size, shape, and chemical behavior rendered to it by a specific arrangement of amino acids. Thanks to these amino acids, an enzyme's active site is unique only to a particular substrate. Many enzymes also consist of a non-protein part known as a cofactor or coenzyme, which can be cations, organic molecules, or prosthetic groups. Enzymes are necessary for many bodily functions in numerous organisms, which is why they are very important. Over these four weeks, we have been asked to choose a specific enzyme, and each meeting we would go over a different concept. For example, we would find the KM and Vmax values, or we would find the optimum pH and temperature for different organisms that use that enzyme. We would also go over the effects that inhibitors and activators have on the certain enzymes. The enzymes that were discussed by our group include lactase, salivary alpha amylase, and trypsin. We discussed their importance and many factors within them. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Imani. We will now invite group four to present. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Hernandez. I'm from Los Angeles, California. This fall semester, I'll be studying mechanical engineering. Um, I'll be representing a research group number four. I'll be sharing our experience with our research work and our time in VSI. So to start off, our research uh, is from the iLab in the civil engineering department. Our faculty advisor is Dr. Lucio Sobelman and our PhD mentor is Mr. Yuho. Uh, so in today's modern times, there's a major problem that deals with the loss of energy within buildings whether that be through the use of a heater or an air conditioner. So essentially, our research focused on using a specific algorithm called semantic segmentation and a drone with both RGB and thermal imaging to detect where the buildings lose the most energy in order to improve energy efficiency in buildings. Uh, some of the key VSI learnings we got from the program is that it's important to ask questions during class. It's important to attend office hours with questions and to review the notes and lecture slides. Our experience within the program was great. Um, it was a lot of fun. The VSI program gave us a great opportunity to meet other uh, incoming freshmen within Viterbi. And although we didn't meet in person, we still had lots of fun in our classes, research group, and in the main general meetings. Uh, the student success workshops were, within the program was a massive help because they exposed us to different engineering departments apart from those that we're majoring in, and they provide us, provided us with valuable connections and various resources. And as you can see, that's, uh, that's me with my research group. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. We will now move to group five. Hey everyone, I'm Anton Ramirez, a future electrical and computer engineering and I'm here representing Group 5, also known as Integrated Circuits and Systems Lab, led by our mentor, hopefully soon to be Dr. Arias Samie. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so before we get into the project and the hands-on stuff, we had to go over the technical aspect of circuits and systems, basically the basics. So we started with circuits, which basically covers Ohm's law, capacitance, resistors, and all that good stuff. Um, and so we were basically able to read diagrams like the ones shown to the right. Uh, we also worked with MATLAB, which stands, which stands for Matrix Laboratory, since it's gonna be a useful tool to implementing the, the lower level circuit design to more advanced systems. And then we moved on to our main part and probably most important thing we went over, which is the Arduinos, which is one like the one, like the blue, uh, circuit to the right. So why they are important and how they work is that if an Arduino was Colonel Sanders, as can be seen here, uh, you can program it to receive an input, in this case, say fried chicken sandwich, and then turn it into a new out output that you'd like, like yum. And so, and then we went over to student implementation. So if we could pop over to the next slide. Okay, so uh, to do this, we split into four teams and each of us basically did our own thing with the guidance of our esteemed uh, soon-to-be doctor, Aria Samie. Uh, so the first team, which is Caleb and Angelis, uh, focused on an autonomous garden, which basically lets the user know the health of the garden based on the sunlight and water level input. Uh, 
the second project was Justin Madison Animus, which was a buzz wire game and a prosthetic robotic arm slash limb, um, which basically is a prosthetic limb. I think it's pretty self-explanatory and hopefully in the future, uh, they could program the prosthetic limb to actually go through the bus wire game without losing it. And then the third project was Selena and Victorious. It's a synthesizer for those of you that don't know what a synthesizer is. It's basically a, a machine that can ch uh, alter sounds like an instrument, I guess you could say. And then the fourth project was Javon, Michael, and myself, which is a sound visualizer, which basically takes us input the sound intensity and turns it into a visual display. Now, these descriptions don't do them justice. So if you want to learn more, go check out Caleb Fleury's video when they're posted. It's a really awesome video. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Anton. I'd like to invite group six to present. Good afternoon. My name is Nicholas Gomez. I'm an entering uh, civil engineering student. I was in a research group with Daniel Gonzalez, Enrique Perez, Jennifer Hernandez, and Justin Jimenez under the mentorship of Runhe Chu and Birchin Betrick Gerber. During the past four weeks, my fellow group members and I created an emergency environment in a virtual construction site in order to better understand and influence human behavior in <clears throat> emergency situations. Uh, specifically, fire emergencies on construction sites are a concern for architects and engineers designing buildings since proper preparation for such circumstances is expensive and ineffective. Using VR is ideal to identify the behavior of people in emergency scenarios since it reduces hypothetical bias while implementing, implementing a structural design. The benefits of this research are, uh, some of them are a safer building design and uh, better safety training for construction workers. Some of the uh, take, uh, my fellow group members and I gained various things through the VSI program. Specifically, I learned how to contribute to research. I gained calculus and coding skills and was able to network within the USC student body. Uh, Daniel thought it provided him valuable exposure to what classes were like, and that I taught him to be more open to acquiring new skills, even if it's not within his major, and improved his interpersonal skills through the various social events that we had throughout the program. Enrique found the importance of research to improve the quality of life, uh, develop skills that are needed for networking, and understood the need for discipline in college. Shown on your screen are some, shown on your screen are some images uh, of some of our memories from the program. On your left is a screenshot from a program that we made in uh, the programming class for Python, in which we were able to better group points that are plotted on the graph. And shown on your right is a screenshot from our Zoom meeting within the research group this past week with uh, Daniel on your top left, Mr. Chu on your top right, Enrique on the bottom right, and myself on the bottom left. Uh, thank you for your time. I'd like to pass it on to the next group. Thank you, Nicholas. We'll now move to group seven. Hello, my name is Jared Ramirez and I will be presenting on behalf of research group seven. As mentees working alongside PhD student Amin Jabini, our research group studied a probabilistic approach to structural life cycle analysis. Many simulations regarding structural systems encounter various uncertainties, whether that's the different loads that a structure may undergo or the innate properties of the materials that may differ between components. Modeling these uncertainties is crucial to understanding the effectiveness of the system as a whole. Since these uncertainties exist, a deterministic approach does not properly represent the system. Instead, a probabilistic analysis is needed. Probabilistic analysis allows us to quantitatively assess variables that may have different probability distributions and then combine the results to provide an overall probability distribution of the final outcomes. During our experiment, we considered a system that has two components and experienced two different intensities of disasters. We analyzed this system over a 60 year time frame. Each component had two different qualities, a medium quality with a lower strength capacity and a higher quality with a higher strength capacity. Since we modeled the deterioration in the structure using a uniform distribution, the disaster intensities using log normal distributions, and the disaster occurrences using a Poisson distribution, 
we needed a probabilistic analysis to assess the results. If either component broke, the replacement cost for the component was added to the total cost of the system. We then applied these inputs to create a distribution of the structure's total lifetime cost across all 10,000 iterations. In the end, we created a distribution model that depicted the probability of the total cost of the structure exceeding $28,000. After running the four different combinations of design options, we compared the total cost of all 10,000 samples and created charts to model their probabilities. Our results concluded that by investing in two higher quality components, the probability of the total cost of the system ever exceeding $28,000 was significantly lower than any of the other design options. In the instance in which the initial investment for the two higher quality components could not be met, the next best option was to substitute the component with a lower mean capacity for a high quality component. One of our major takeaways from this experiment was that when analyzing uncertainty within complex systems, a probabilistic approach provides a much better representation of the system than a deterministic analysis does. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Jared. And now we will hear from our last group, Group 8. Hello, my name is Marina. I'm the representative from Group 8. And in our research group project, we decided to focus on sustainable alternatives to traditional habitat features. We all know that big cities such as LA, New York, and Washington have big problems with air pollution. Not only it costs 5% of US GDP, but also it affects on human health a lot with respiratory lung diseases, cardiovascular problems, and allergies. So scientists created HEPA filters, high efficiency particulate air filters. These are portable small nets that can filter 99.97% for 0.3 micro, which means that 99.97% of every particle that is a bit smaller than a bacteria or bigger will get stuck inside the filter. Also, HEPA filters specifically have a really good advantage. They have a low pressure drop, which means that they save more energy than common filters. However, these machines are not perfect. Not only they, they cost a lot, which makes it more difficult for some people to have access to it, but also, they are made of plastic and fiberglass, which together make impossible for it to be recycled. So our group decided to research some other material that could be used in the manufacturing of HEPA filters. These materials should be firstly environmental friendly, also made with inex inexpensive materials. They should have a good filtration technique combined with a good purification technology so it can have a better performance and they should work in different weathers, in dry waters and humid weathers. We found that two different materials fit this description. One is the ceramic and the other is glass wool. Ceramic is a biodegradable material made, of, made out of clay, earthen materials, powder and water. This material has the same efficiency as the HEPA filter, which is 99.97% filtering efficiency for 0.3 micron particles. And it has an extra advantage. It can be reused just by using a combo of air pulsing and water to clean and regenerate the filter. The second material we found was glass wool, which are recyclable, recyclable material made of fibers of glass arranged in the same pattern as wool. This material also has the same efficiency as the ceramic and the HEPA filter. And just like the ceramic can be reused using an air back pulse and back blow for its effective cleaning. We learned this with, because of this research project, research project from VSI. And we are very thankful for this because without it, we wouldn't have learned how to build a proper Resume, we would still compare ourselves to others and now we understand that we're different from each other. We learned also that it is very important to have a good network and good relationship with your peers. And we should remember not to overcommit. Do one thing at a time and remember that undergrad experience is going to be very, very important and fun for us, so we should enjoy it. Thank you. 
Thank you, Marina, and thank you all for your work. In particular, I would like to thank each one of our research mentors that have balanced facilitating and leading our student research groups while still working on their academic programs. Your support and guidance are invaluable to helping us achieve our goals for the program. I would now like to invite Vice Dean for Diversity and Strategic Initiatives, Dr. Brandy Jones, to provide our closing remarks. Dr. Jones is a leader in pursuing equity, diversity, and inclusion initiatives for the Viterbi School of Engineering. She works collaboratively with Viterbi colleagues on, strategic, on strategies to increase the diversity and enhance the experiences of our students, faculty, and staff, ensure an inclusive culture, and promote their retention. We are grateful Dr. Jones, for Dr. Jones's support and advocacy of the Viterbi Summer Institute that has thrived under her leadership. Please join me in welcoming Dean Jones. Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to greet you and share closing remarks for a program that is truly near and dear to me. Shortly after joining USC Viterbi three and a half years ago, my vision was to recreate what was the CED summer program. My vision was to create an experience to build a community of scholars and promote excellence. I pitched the idea to Dean Janusz Orzos, and without hesitation, he said, absolutely. We are so fortunate to have an engineering dean who is passionate about student success, and more specifically, committed to the growth and development of those who are historically underrepresented in engineering. On behalf of the students and staff, thank you, Dean Orzos, for being here tonight and your continued support. You know, one needs more than just a vision to carry out a program. I did the easy part. Tracy Thomas Navarro and Christina Mireles Martin of the Center for Engineering do all of the heavy lifting to make VSI a success every year. I am so incredibly fortunate to work with two of the hardest working members of the Viterbi family. Once we found out that we could not return to campus in person, I had a request figure out a way to make VSI happen. They quickly constructed a plan, recruited a team, and ran a successful four-week program. Thank you, Tracy and Christina. We are incredibly grateful for the generous support of our donors who make this program possible. A special thank you to our lead corporate sponsor, Chevron. We look forward to our continued working relationship. And a big thank you to all of our colleagues who played a role in the Summers Institute, especially Viterbi Advancement under the direction of Marianne Schwartz. Your team under the direction of Four Rivers Productions made tonight's program a huge success. So thank you very much. Now on to the real stars of the evening, the participants of the 2020 Viterbi Summer Institute. You have grown tremendously over the past four weeks, and we look forward to seeing you blossom over the next four years. As you close out the Viterbi Summer Institute and begin your journey as USC undergraduate students, we welcome and celebrate all of who you are and all that you bring to the Viterbi community. We know you're engineers, and we also appreciate appreciate that you are painters, you're guitarists, you're music lovers, you play volleyball, baseball, basketball, soccer, you run track, you sing opera, you have YouTube channels, you are writers, producers, actors, you produce music for video games, you speak different languages, and one of you even invented your own language. I charge all of you to take all of who you are to be the best engineers you can be. Dream big, take advantage of every single opportunity, be excellent because you are the best and brightest. We expect nothing less than excellence from you. You are indeed God and we are so proud of you. Congratulations and I will now turn the program over to my colleague, Christina Mireles Martin. Thank you, Dean Jones, for those kind words and inspiring remarks. On behalf of Tracy and I, we wish to thank you so much for attending this amazing event. It was truly unforgettable. Before we conclude, we have a video of advice and well wishes from a few of our VSI alumni. Please enjoy the video.
I'm a Viterbi engineer because of the Viterbi Summer Institute. I never thought that I would meet a group of individuals who were so like me and who were as excited about uh, college, but still weary and unaware about what that really meant. I remember feeling a little bit scared, a little nervous, but Summer Bridge made sure that I had complete comfort in starting freshman year. I attended BSI in 2019, and it did a wonderful job of preparing me to study engineering because it immersed me in college level courses and research opportunities. My favorite part about BSI, it was the lifelong friendships. The people that I met there, still to this day end up being some of my closest friends. One piece of advice that I have for you at your first semester and really all your semesters at USC is don't be afraid to reach out to the students that you've met here and even the students that are in this video, we're all here to support you. Viterbi Summer Institute of 2020, congratulations. Viterbi Summer Institute 2020, congratulations. As you enter your first year of college, don't underestimate the power of your calendar. Make sure you schedule your classes, office hours, clubs, times to study, and yes, times to spend with friends and family. Viterbi Summer Institute 2020, congratulations. I'm so excited for you to start your freshman year. My biggest advice is to be adaptive to change, especially with taking classes online. We're all adapting right now, I'm working from home 100% online. So Viterbi Summer Institute 2020, congratulations. Thank you so much. And fight on, fight on, fight on, fight on. Congratulations once again to our 2020 ESI participants. It has truly been a pleasure and honor and a privilege to work with all of you this summer. As we conclude, we would like to include you in our tradition of ending our events with the USC Trojan Marching Band. Please enjoy their performance of the USC Fight Song. Be well, stay safe, and fight on. Mm -hmm.